afternoon and welcome back to the vlog. It is an extremely grey, wet and windy day here, here in London. As you can probably tell by the fact that I can hardly hear me, I'm pushing against this headwind. I'm on my way to go and see Mike Fit James and Andy this morning over in their shop in Richmond. I'm actually going down there right now because my cousin Tom, who is a fairly keen road racer having got into the sport in the last couple of years, needs a bike fit. Someone's had fun. Damn. Also, whilst Andy is busy downstairs in the bike fitting studio, I'm going to take the opportunity to speak to James and answer some of your questions that you may have had in my last video, which was my shoe fitting, and give you guys an update on just how that's getting on. So, stay tuned. Hello. Hi. How's it going, brother? Good, brother. Yes. You right? Yeah, not bad, not bad. What have you been up to? Uh, just doing bike fit things. Some bike you know, fit things. Bike shop things. <laughs> Saving the world from evil bike fitting motion capture systems. And the saddle's too high. Saddles are too high, thanks to motion capture systems. <laughs> I met you at my brother's. Your lines were like Hello, mate. Yeah, right. Made it to Richmond. I did. How yeah. long did it take you to get here? Avoided the clouds. Well, actually, I drove. You drove? I drove. Cheating. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, I was, I was at home, I looked outside, and I thought, those clouds <laughs> look pretty thick. Yeah. <laughs> so I got in the car. Drove up to Richmond and dropped out from there. I was tempted to drive, but do you know how expensive the parking is here? No. That's why I parked in Richmond Park. There you go. It's like a cheapskate. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> No, more like expert. So what are you here today for? Well... Obviously a bike fit. But... Yeah, bike fit. So, um, well, there's a few reasons. Yeah. One of, the, one of the main reasons is I want to get a new winter bike soon. So I want to get that um, fit nicely. The other thing is um, I got some new shoes and since I got those I've been getting a bit of saddle soreness yeah. um, and the other reason is I, I rode, a, um, I rode a, a pros bike, well, it, my friend had it out and he was, he was playing on it and I had it, jumped on it and I thought that is so comfy yeah. compared to my bike. And what do you have? I've got a Chip Neely Bond over there. Which is a nice bike. Yeah. Like it's fast, really good sort of um, instant power. Yeah. But um, compared to that other bike I yeah. rode, yeah, it's just it felt like it felt like I was putting the other bike on rather than getting on a bike. I felt like right. I was putting on like a tailored yeah. suit, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So hopefully Andy here can uh, help you. Yeah. Get these issues. That's it. That's the plan. Uncontrollable. <laughs> yeah, I could hardly fight it. You took me to your parents. We were All right. joking. All right, then. All right. All right. <laughs> so the last, the last week. So, so since our shoe fitting uh, about ten days ago, I've been using these shoes pretty much every day, and um, I'm glad to report I've had no issues really whatsoever. The Wait. first couple of days, there was a slight pain towards the front. Um, but I think maybe just healing issues, and since then it's been absolutely well, we fine. We lowered the arch support as well, didn't we? So I think we probably went a little bit too aggressive with the arch support. At first, yeah, and then we put little, slightly less ones in. Yeah. So you're now on a, you're on a lower arch support, which, you know, if it's, if it's too invasive, it's going to cause you issues. Always. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's good that we sorted that out. Good? Good, absolutely. So I wondered, if we had a few questions of people saying, can you show us the G8s in slightly more um, detail? Because I, I, I showed a very quick shot and I didn't give enough uh, yeah, detail. I as well. So the G8 is a semi-custom modular orthotic. It comes from Australia, it's designed by a podiatrist, a guy called David Lee. Um, and it comes with five different arch pieces which can be moved in a number of different section in a number of different ways so it can be moved medially laterally so in and out backwards and forwards um, to provide a lot of the benefits of a full custom orthotic but it, it's a lot easier I the, the reason I like this is because I find it easy to administer it's not easy to administer the reason I like it is because it's faster to administer because I've got three hours in a bike fit uh, if I'm gonna have to spend 40 minutes to an hour setting up set footbeds Frankly, that's that's too long. That's too long. It's a third of the session gone just on footbeds. These take ten minutes. They're just as effective. They're just as supportive. You stick them in the shoes and they work. I mean, they, they like and like I say, they have the element of adjustability. Furthermore, on 
as a means of uh, renewing them with a full custom footbed, uh, they tend to wear out. I mean, all, all footbeds wear out. The thing with this is, if the arch piece wears out, which it does, you take it off, you throw it in the bin, and you put a new one in. Um, and I, you know, every time someone comes into a in for a um, in for a follow up with me, they uh, I, that's one of the first things I do: renew their their arch pieces. Um, you can buy these straight from my shop. Just give me a call, drop me an email, or and, and I'll very happily send you a pair. Uh, soon there will be an online store as well, which will be able to so we'll be able you'll be able to buy them online from me. Like I say, it's a great product. It's, in my opinion, more cost effective than a, than, a, than a custom, and it's certainly more time effective. And out of the box, it comes with a whole range of yep. different arch supports and, and yep. heel, heel supports, and basically, obviously, you fit it to... It doesn't come with the heel supports. They're additional, but ah. it does come with the arch supports. I mean, yeah. I, I stock a lot of the heel supports, but you can get a heel wedge kit for... I can't remember how much it is. Got it's about, about 15 pounds. Okay, cool. And I'm the, L, I'm the L2, or the level 2, which yes. is... Which is a fairly uh, low on on the low end of the arch support. Yeah, it's relatively low end uh, um, the arch support spectrum. But I mean, I find myself usually using threes and fours. Uh, but but yeah, the generally a footbed is only as good as the shoe that it's put into. Yeah, yeah. So so absolutely. Yeah. And just to give you guys an idea of how high the arch support is for R four, which is this one here. I mean, you can see what's that about three centimeters of yeah, of arch. It's exactly right. It's about thirty mil. Is this one of your weekly training sessions? That's it, I wish I could plug my uh, <laughs> plug my Garmin in. It doesn't count, it's not going on Strava. No, I know, so I didn't do this. All this effort, <laughs> all this sweat, it didn't happen. Thank you. <laughs> Crashing into me. So then, from that video, we had loads of comments, um, and the general theme seemed to be James, London's way too far away. Can you come to us? So I reckon we should announce our uh, our tour dates. What do you, what do you think? Oh, should we be doing that with Francis though? Should Francis <laughs> not be here? I think. Okay, yeah. I think we can say we can say a date though, surely, without Franny. Yeah, go on, go on, give us a date. So we're talking fifteenth of November to fifteenth of December, but yes. the location is yet to be disclosed, right? Yes. Hmm. Yes. Coming soon. Yeah. To be continued. My suspicion is where we're going, there won't be that many people who want to this. <laughs> I'm going to overlay the question onto the screen. Crafty Pixel, what would you say to him? I mean, I, I don't see any reason why that that can't be overcome with fit. I mean, I, I, I've had guys who've come through to see me who have had really very serious uh, mobility problems and range of motion problems and okay they don't look you know they don't look pro on a bike they don't look you know what we'd expect to look on a bike but those individuals are riding with, without pain and I, I don't I don't think that you should ever really be in pain on a bicycle I mean when I'm talking when I say pain I'm talking about joint pain and, and neural pain any of these kind of actual pains I can't do anything about this comfort of exertion I'm you know, a bike fitter I'm not a wizard but I think if you've uh, if you're if you're having knee pain, that's definitely something that can be overcome. If you've got a leg length discrepancy, I mean, one and a half inches is did you say one and a half inches? It's quite a lot, mm. um, and it's probably in the realms of what I would. Well, it's almost definitely in the realms of what I would stack. So so leg length stacking. Interestingly, I've got a prop here. Leg well, length hey. stacking is like this. So you you'd stack to the shorter leg to try and level the. So pelvis. you literally just put shims underneath. Yeah, absolutely. And and actually, there's going to be a post coming on my Instagram about this soon. Uh, but there's the there's there's a very serious issue with with leg length stacking. Uh, this particular individual doesn't have a leg length discrepancy but they've had a bike fit with using a motion capture system which has meant that they sit off the right hand side and the mocap system has um, clocked the fact that the left leg extends more than the right uh, so they've stacked the, sh the, the, um, the shoe rather than actually lowering the saddle height and, and unfortunately this is really really common in bike fitting and I think yeah. you've, you've got to be uh, you've got to be careful about who you choose who you ch how you choose your bike fitters IBFI Look for the IBFI certification. Anyway, Absolutely. that's a very long-winded uh, answer, but 
go and get a good bike fit, uh, and, and I'm sure, oh, come see me. I'm sure we can sort it out for you. Andy Corso asks about shoe volume. Andy Corso, he's been following us for ages. How's it going, Andy? <laughs> Thanks for following and watching. Top fan badge. Yeah, totally. Uh, gold star. <laughs> um, so, funnily enough, I, I, I get conflicting uh, results when putting a footbed into a shoe. There's two ways of looking at it. Now, I mean, a GA, for example, is quite a lot thicker. Than, it's, got, it's got a denser volume than, than the stock city footbed. So, it, it can often eat into the volume inside of the shoe. But this does depend on how much arch collapse and how much foot splay occurs. So as you stand up, or if you, as you load the foot, your arch, your longitudinal arch collapses and your foot essentially grows, gets longer. And this is the case with everyone. It's the natural suspension of the foot, if you will. So what an arch support does is it tends to help reduce that splay. So actually, in some cases, it can increase the amount of volume inside the shoe. So I think the, the moral of the story here really is to try a shoe, if you're buying new shoes, try a shoe with the footbed rather than buying a shoe and then going and buying a footbed or the, the, other, way, the other way around. Yep. Uh, because they, they can have conflicting uh, results. about odd width discrepancies. Uh, foot width discrepancy. Yes. So one foot's wider than the other, and yes. he said one's 110 millimeters, the other's 118. I mean, it shouldn't matter that much. I mean, eight mil, it's a, I mean, that's a reasonable amount, and I guess I would, I would be interested as to where that difference is occurring. But I think there are certain shoes. Okay, so there are certain shoes that would that might be very good for for that type of difference. Uh, namely, I mean, Lake make a shoe called a CX two four one, which I don't stock, <laughs> um, which has a, 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 a type of it's what they call new foam, which means that the whole thing can be closed down quite heavily over over the foot, regardless of the volume of the foot. Um, I would have thought that a difference of eight millimeters would be allowed, would would be made up by the closure. But one thing I will say is that you're probably better off with a shoe that has uh, two or three closure systems. I, you know, like two boa, uh, two boa dials, for example, so that you can actually close down over the smaller foot a little bit better. That would be my instinct. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, look at the CX two four one from Lake. It's a it's a decent shoe with, uh, with the decent new foam leather. Awesome. And then finally, Farron asks, what is James' view on boat-like carbon moldable shoes, um, obviously by heat? How do they compare to your, uh, you know, your normal insole system? No, I, I think the, you know, heat moldable, a heat moldable shoe is great. I mean, I ride them myself. I would, I would seldom go as far as to say that everyone needs them or anyone needs them. I think definitely, I mean, I've got a pair of Lake CX402s, which is, you know, a, a custom moldable uh, cycling shoe. And, you know, by far, they're, they're the best shoes I've, I've ever had and ridden by a long way. Uh, I've had shoes from a certain Australian brand, and, I mean, I, I, I found them far less stable. Mm. I, think, I think shoes, generally speaking, are malleable enough that you can get a pretty good fit but i think you have to be objective about how they fit in the first place you've got to understand the foot and, and and buy a shoe or sell a shoe to someone based on their feet rather than just saying oh i like this lake or i like this city and saying and then, and then trying to make it fit you does that make sense absolutely yeah so you should go into a shop with an open mind and and realistically if you're going to be buying shoes from a shop they should be measuring your feet, in my mm. opinion. You don't, you don't go into a ski shop and have and say, "Oh, I just I want to try a pair of these Solomon ski boots on." The shopkeeper's going to go, "No, you're a moron. We're going to look at your feet." Mm. Uh, but that doesn't happen in cycling shops. So go into a cycling shop that perhaps specialises in bike fitting um, or has a little bit of an understanding about shops uh, shoes. Sorry, uh, and and that that will tend to put you in better stead for getting a shoe that actually fits you. There you go. Question time over and out. Thank you. Welcome. You know I always kept you like a dirty way out. I'll disappear slowly. So I won't hear you. So what what have we done? Uh quite a few changes really. 
Tom's position. Um, obviously, change the saddle. Pedals are also wider axle version, so plus four mil uh, each side. Uh, you're looking at a sort of centimeter drop in saddle height. Reach the, the sort of brake levers being reduced by four and a half centimeters. Okay. Oh, that's a lot. So that is a lot. That is a lot. Yeah. Mm. Um, and in terms of handlebar drop, you've come up uh, two, just under two centimeters. That's a lot as well. So you've yeah. come considerably shorter than yeah. touch higher. Yeah. And you were yeah, quite low. Quite aggressive before. Yeah. But he's also had some some new cleats, uh, some new shoe inserts, has he? Yeah, new orthotics in there. Um, yeah, yeah, cleat position moved as well. Um, I think Tom knows that was the biggest change. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was. So again, that's sort of right. Um, yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm putting pressure through the whole of my foot yeah. rather than just the balls of my feet, mm -hmm. which is a lot better. And it's much flatter, my foot's a lot flatter through the movement rather than kind of me pointing my toes. And the overall fit on the bike, it feels, feels yeah. more natural? Yeah, it feels good, it feels good. Much more upright than I thought I was going to yeah. be. Um, I thought I'd end up actually going the other way, mm. which is weird. Oh, yeah. yeah, but I've come up and I feel, yeah, I do feel more comfortable now, which is good. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Good, good result. So you're going to buy that saddle then? Um, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I could really. <laughs> The day that we almost died. <laughs> almost a year ago today, mate. Whoa. I mean, that, that was such a hard bike ride. That was, it was mega, wasn't it? I, I actually, I think I almost had a little cry on that bike ride. <laughs> <laughs> it was so hard. That's the hardest thing I've ever done. Yeah. Uh, I love God. it how like we're all, we've got these like pasty chests and these yeah. like brown arms. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Brits abroad. Brown arms and legs. Clunk, clunk, clunk. <laughs> all done, all, all done. done. Yeah. 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 yeah, good. Looking forward to taking out oh, the road. Yeah. See how she feels. Absolutely. Go and get a fast lap of the park. Um, maybe. Are you <laughs> going to come out? Um, I'll, I'll stick some cleats on and come for a lap, maybe. No, you won't. You're lying. I can tell your family. <laughs> <laughs>